Yo, what's up, team? Welcome back to J3 Entertainment. You guys know what time it is. It's time to react, y'all. Yes, it is, brother. And what are we reacting to today? The unspeakable horrors of the deep sea. <laughs> yes. It's my narrator voice. Yeah, all you needed was some smoke to come by. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? That's it. And a trench coat. <laughs> yes, sir. Shout out to Robert Stack. <laughs> Airplane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so I'm bringing this to the channel, man. Uh, I like doing these type of reactions, you know, uh, unspeakable things and, you know, and ghosts. And I'm sold. Things already. like that. So this is on animals. Now, I follow this guy on TikTok. He got me through the last part of the pandemic, man, because he got a lot of hitters, man. He was just breaking down the do's and don'ts of animals. I'm going to check I mean? this out. I'm already in. And then, so gravitated us over here on YouTube. Okay. And a casual graphic, uh, a geographic. That's a dope a title. Channel, you know what I mean? Okay. And uh, he breaks everything down, yo. I'm going to subscribe. All right. For there sure. it is. Good looking out. You guys subscribe to his channel, too. Yeah. So let's get into it, man. This brother's okay. doing his thing, man. Let's get it. All right. All right. Let's get this party started now. You've probably heard me say that I'd rather eat 10 pounds of Popeye's biscuits with no drink than ever go out into the ocean. Well, <laughs> I'd rather ride cross country on a bike with a hot grill for a seat than spend half a second in the deep sea. There's a lot of living nightmares and paralysis demons come to life if you sink deep enough. And the Megalodon is not one of them. You'll often hear this thing about how the prehistoric apex predator never got discontinued. It's just chilling a step above hell in the abyss. This now I heard that. Oh. Now I heard that. Really? There's no proven fact that the Megalodon is extinct. Okay. I'm that's, with it. That's scary. I'm with it. It's so Meg is officially a true story. Well, actually, three good reasons. One, there just isn't enough food to sustain a 60-foot you to the natural order. Two, <laughs> if nature did keep the same jumbo jaws that peaked in the Pliocene, we at least would have seen a body by now. And number three, why do y'all want this to be alive so bad? I promise you there's way worse things down there. Like, I would evacuate my bowels if I ever saw a giga great white shark. But put me in front of a t and squid, and I'm shitting more bricks than the entire city of Newark. The big fin squid is easily one of the most disturbing things alive as I'm saying this. It's a T-posing predator with arms estimated to max out at just what? under 30 feet. Wait. Nah. What? What is that? That's a squid. That's crazy. You see how fast it was moving? Or yeah. was it the camera? Right, right. That's <laughs> that's what I was trying to figure out. I'm like, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. All right. Who's the cameraman? That's what I want to know. Kudos to them. <laughs> it's always... Who's capturing this? This magic of the under Someone has to live to tell the story. There it is. Scientists believe James the Cameron. big fin catches bodies by dragging those arms, which can be easily 20 times its own body length, oh along God. the ocean floor like trawling nets and Damn. feeding on whatever poor soul accidentally bumps into them. You're going to hear me say believe or we think a lot, and that's because we don't know a whole lot about them. Almost every sighting and virtually every specimen studied were either juveniles or paralarva. We have mm. no way of knowing exactly what their final form could look like. War of the Worlds. This, the design so familiar. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they were telling us something. May, Spielberg was on to something. TC was on to something. Yeah. HG <laughs> Wells, baby. Like, for all we know, this could be Junior, and we just haven't seen Mama Big Fin yet. Who would have mm -hmm. thought that just putting elbows on a squid would instantly turn it into the spawn of Satan? Oh, and if you thought the Big Fin was just this slow, passive floating predator, then you're seriously underestimating the ocean's ability to massacre your mental health. And if you're curious, this video was taken about 7,000 feet down in the Gulf of Mexico. But considering they're believed to be the wow. deepest living squids at about 20,000 feet, I have a theory. This is a juvenile, and the big boys are the ones shacking it up down in the crotch of the ocean. But good news, the big fin probably only feeds on small fish and crustaceans. Bad news, there are squids big enough to beef with the biggest predators on the planet. And the biggest predator on the planet that isn't a disgraced former YouTuber is the sperm whale, <laughs> which on its own would have to be one of the most traumatizing things to witness during their two-hour hunting expeditions down in the deep sea. Well, oh. the tankiest carnivore on Earth regularly runs fades with the giant squid. And by giant, we're talking about calamari growing to an estimated 40 feet long. God Not only damn. are they themselves predators that hunt using 20-foot tentacles, they're opportunistic cannibals that would 100% murk their entire family reunion for some calories. Woo! Bro. World War III, under sea. Bro. Man. See? And, and we haven't even discovered half of that. We haven't discovered. I think we only discovered like, like, five percent of the ocean. And he said that they go head up with the other bigger beasts. Like so, they're like they're not even like fully like developed like majority. That's, that's the Kraken, bro. That's crazy. There was some truth to that. Take a My whole heart. ship down. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
Now, Poseidon. nature high key screwed up their character design. They have a donut shaped brain and an esophagus running through it, meaning if they swallow something big enough, not only do they run the risk of choking to a flat line, they can also factory reset their entire personality through severe brain damage. Whoa. Which is why they mitigate this by shredding their victims with a razor sharp beak and what is essentially a tongue with teeth, mm. the radula. That Whoa. beak is such a weapon that you'll rarely see a sperm whale that hasn't been tattooed during a struggle with a giant squid. And while Whoa. the plus size cephalopod usually oh, loses in a war with the whale, they do not make it easy. But the most disturbing thing about them is that eye. Giant squids have the most physically imposing eye in nature, with it being roughly the size of a soccer ball. Contrary to popular belief, huge eyes don't exactly help it see further, but it does mean they're terrifyingly good at noticing objects giving off their own light. Which is a lifesaver, wow. since when their biggest optosperm whale is on the hunt, modern day leviathan disturbs glowing creatures like jellyfish and crustaceans who flash in response. Having eyes as big as our heads means the giant squid can detect and use those flashes to avoid becoming a course. But that also means that if you ever go swimming in the Giga Squid's area code, the flashes you'd create mean that while you might not see it, the same animal that does its own kind dirty would know exactly where you are. And I now, that's some freaky stuff, bro. Yeah. Because I would hate to be in the sea and go out like that. That one eye just lurking. Senses is on a thousand. See, that's why we ain't supposed to be in the water. That's why we can't breathe underwater. Yeah. It's just... There's things beyond our understanding, bro. Like, cause you're, you're, yeah, it's, it's the ocean, but you're going in, they call it uncharted territory for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Sebastian and Ariel. Stay in lane. Down there. Like, <laughs> I'm good. You man. know what I mean? Like. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm already scared. We this know is, what's up when we see that one eye, that red eye just lurking. Bro. Doom, doom. We know what's up. This is a different type of fear, bro. Yeah. Cause they're hunting too, the same way we are. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like they're they just trying to survive just like we are. It's crazy, right? Uh, yeah. Honestly, there's only one thing that could be worse than getting stalked by a school bus sized head foot. There's another squid with hunting tactics so spiritually upsetting, I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm going to go ahead and use a lifeline. The Humboldt squid, <laughs> also known as the Red Devil. I'm Lindsay, by the way. Hi. Humboldt squid. That was tight. I'm going to use a lifeline. Let's run it. <laughs> okay. Squid are found in the eastern Pacific Ocean, typically between 600 to 2300 feet below the surface of the ocean. And their nickname comes from the way they use their pigment cells called chromatophores to communicate. You're probably familiar with chromatophores through videos of different cephalopods using them to change color, blending into their surroundings, and even dreaming. And Humboldt squid notably use them to turn bright red when they're aggravated, hence the nickname Red Devil. It's very on brand. They're also extremely predatory and have been known to act aggressively towards scuba divers on rare occasion, which becomes a bit more terrifying when I tell you that they can get to eight feet long and 100 pounds. Now you might be thinking, Lindsay, that is not that big. What about the giant squid and the colossal squid that can both get to like 40 feet long? Well, I haven't told you the best part yet. The Humboldt squid is known to live and hunt in groups of up to 10, no, up to 100, no, 1,000, yes, in groups of over 1,000. Damn. One. That's crazy. 1,000, eight foot. I, I need footage on that thousand squid that's about 992 many if you ask me while hunting in these groups they use their chromatophores to communicate with each other coordinating movements and attacks allowing them to take down larger prey dragging them into the depths until they go unconscious scientists have identified some of these communication patterns as you can see in this little chart but still don't know exactly what any of them mean but regardless that sounds like one of the worst ways to be unalived in the ocean oh wait this isn't a tiktok collaboration that sounds like one of the worst huh. ways to die in the ocean it, it so does. as you can see whether it's being confronted by a humble block party or squaring up with a live action kraken there are many aspects of the deep sea that end up with you putting your therapist up a tax bracket and a lot of that's because of this cute little thing known as deep sea gigantism the idea that the cold temperature dissolved oxygen and the lack of pressure that ain't predators real. allow some animals to escalate to the biggest and most terrifying versions of themselves exhibit a okay. the japanese spider crab which can measure 12 feet across from claw to claw and weigh as much as a human toddler only thing worse than a giant spider crab is a giant crab spider. This is an Antarctic sea spider. Oh. A dinner plate size. Oh, and you froze it. Oh my there god. Go. Look at it. Look mm. at it. Two faced. Ah! Oh, that, that's disturbing, <laughs> 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 By sucking the life oh. spray through its proboscis. Now, technically, they're not actual oh spiders. Oh my god, no. But also, I imagine most people watching technically don't give a f especially so since that's this why Ronan don't watch this stuff. Mm -hmm. as a face hugger. 
Then there's a giant isopod, oh, which gosh. is essentially an aquatic cockroach big enough to be cradled like a baby. No clue why uh, you're here. And if you're looking for a truly oh, super-sized uh, crossing, the orfish that was nasty. on your list. The giant orfish can grow to well over 30 feet long, and there have even been claims of those in the neighborhood of 50 feet. Proof that back in the day when we had stories about sea monsters, they weren't lying. They just didn't have all the names yet. Also, if you caught that pun earlier, we're friends now. But with... That's what, that's what gets you, huh? Yes. Woo. They're like big roaches. Yeah. It's disgusting. Can't, can't, can't do it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Ah. Those are some good shots, by the way, though. I saw it here first. Credit where credit's due. Those are some good shots, by the way. They, that got me. Deep sea gigantism and the endless expanse of ocean acting as a canvas for Shaitan to practice his art. If you dive deep enough, there be monsters. For example, this. What this is, is What is animal. that? It's a group of animals joined together in something like a hive mind. So we're not talking about it. We're talking about them. And so fauna force like this come in many forms. Like what the, the Portuguese man of war armed with- Are you telling me the thing actually exists? It, it does. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> I, no, <go> <laughs> yo, this is what we need a movie on. Where you at, Blumhouse? Venom to ensure that the excruciating experience of meeting one is permanently etched into your brain. And there's a Praia Dubia, a giant safana force that can flex a total length of up to 160 feet. And even though it's a Whoa. collective group of tiny animals, its length could humble a blue whale, making it technically the longest creature on the planet. Or at best, a modest second, since the bootlace ribbon worm has been reported to reach 180 feet in length. And it's toxic because the ocean, and of course it is, with nasty smelling mucus potent enough to life deprive wow. the crabs it likes to eat. Like I said, whether it's Lucifer's tapeworm or a flying spaghetti creature, there mm. be monsters. And it gets so much worse than a giant worm. Because as terrifying as a deep sea is, it's also nasty. And there might not be anything more repulsive than the hagfish. This loogie linguini. F All right, it's too much stuff going on, man. Uh, no wonder we haven't discovered enough. Right. It's hard to get through all this. Yeah. Jeez. Feeds on the rotting corpses and carcasses that sink down into its domain. And since they don't have any actual teeth, the graveyard guppy feeds by sliding into an opening and eating the decomposing body Wow. from the inside out and you would think that something that eats like a casket wouldn't have to worry about getting put on a plate itself again you're giving the ocean too much credit as self-defense the hagfish will sweat buckets of slime a phlegm jacket that's thick enough to clog the gills of anything hungry enough to f around wow. and unlucky enough to find out to the point where this is the end game of a truck transporting hagfish on the highway Whoa. crashing now, you've definitely seen this picture before but have you ever stopped and asked yourself what they were doing there in the first place you remember how I said nothing that eats like a hagfish should ever have to worry about getting eaten? Well, simple. For these hagfish, their Whoa. final destination were dinner plates in Asian countries such as South Korea where they're considered a delicacy. What? I'm good, bro. What? That's crazy. I ain't eat nothing like that. Oh, man. Mm-mm. An invasion with the gills? Like, that's they were on the streets. Mm-mm. That's crazy. Nah. I'm not putting that in my system. Now, I'm not one to judge other cultures, but we seem to have a habit of constantly trying to eat all the things nature went out of its way to tell us not to. But one thing you won't see as a main course is something ironically named after a fruit. The sea cucumber is like the hagfish in that its meal prep consists of all the things we'd normally flush, burn, or bury. All the soul evacuated bodies that sink down to the ocean like floor instantly get put on the cucumber's or grocery venom. list. It's a literal That's bottom all. feeder, and I mean that since they'll also make a meal out of feces but like with vultures if thanos had beef with sea cucumbers the world would become an infinitely more disgusting place that's not the only way sea cucumbers contribute to society they're also often used as a protective bunker for fish and well let's just say they break in through the back door oh yeah it's a violation <laughs> oh. of the highest natural order it gets worse Dang. when a pearl fish decides to have a play date right next to its prostate I don't even know if they have a prostate, but you get doop, what I doop. Mean. If that makes you uncomfortable, <laughs> here's an ad to give you time to mentally prepare for what's next. This adorable little guy is known as a basket star. It's a type of brittle star and an echinoderm, which actually... Look at it. Look at it. It's right there in your face, bro. It's... I hate you. Bro, and, this is... <laughs> and I told y'all, I, I don't eat scavengers. This is perfect timing. You just... The I, don't, I, don't, I don't eat scavengers. I don't eat no lobster, no crabs, no shrimps. I understand. I don't eat no oh, bottom I feeders, bro. I don't. I understand. And and and, and I mean, I don't. Wow. I it's, even I even stopped eating pork. <laughs> I, I don't, bro. Yes, yeah. At yep. some point, yeah, you just you gotta break that family chain. That you thing just, ate that. Yeah. And you're gonna eat it. <laughs> nah, I'm good, bro.
makes it a close cousin of the sea cucumber. If you ever learned about fractals in geometry, then that's why the repeating pattern of branching arms might look familiar. It's also why the US is really wasting $20 billion a year looking into space, because the real ET sh is happening right here. Because of the <laughs> unsightly way basket stars get from A to B, they've also earned the nickname Sea Snakes. I feel itchy all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. However, even though it looks like something right. Lucifer would use to pleasure himself, they eat mostly zooplankton and are pretty much harmless for the most part. And honestly, that pretty much describes 80% of the nonsense in the deep sea, only really harmful to your peace of mind. Like take the frilled shark. Having been around for 80 something million uh, years, whoa. not only is the frilled shark a living fossil, it's likely nature's rough draft beta version of sharks today. Also, don't let this video fool you. They can grow to a respectable six feet long. Also, they can be pregnant for three and a half years, which honestly makes about as much sense as everything else down there. Damn. And in terms of your mental health, the frilled shark is pretty harmless until you look them in the mouth. The devil's Damn. fleshlight has hundreds of needle-like teeth to ensure that anything that gets caught in there doesn't get a second chance to pursue so happiness. And for a shark that's been around long enough to have attended Saturn's wedding, I don't know why, but every picture of them looks like they're struggling with their own existence. Like I said, though, <laughs> they're not a threat to humans. But like Razor sharp like everywhere, and then he's got the extra Straight support. Straight right through your orange, bro. Yeah, the tongue, everything. The so one human it, that got eaten. It's an instant. It's yeah, a rat, bro. It's, it's instant. I also said therapy ain't cheap, so if you don't want to end up on a couch, don't look a frilled shark in the mouth. But yeah, wow. you'd be surprised at just how many types of sharks you'll find in the same neighborhood SpongeBob got stranded in that one time. You have 20 <laughs> foot sleeper sharks that are somehow able to use stealth to just spawn and inhale sustenance like a water Kirby. He said Speaking stealth. of sleepers, in 2015, a Pacific sleeper was recorded in the Solomon's Island. Why is that important? Well, its home address was right under an active volcano, proving that if any animal had plot armor, it'd be sharks. Then you have the ghost shark, which, okay, yep, you got me, is it an actual shark. It's a close cousin known as a chimera. The what the part, hell? Though, that's that's on brand. crazy it looking. Remind a cloaking sh So blends in, adapts. It looked like it's blind. Yeah. Me of the dry bones fish from Mario. Yeah, he's got the camouflage color tone, too. They don't even have the teeth you'd cool. expect it to have, but instead they have plates that they use to grind up food. But since nature's constantly overcompensating, chimeras do have venomous spines that are harmful to more than just your mental well-being. But by far the weirdest thing about them, chimeras have a tenaculum on their forehead. A tenaculum is a reproductive organ, meaning this fish has a... <laughs> yeah, on his forehead. Venom and that aside, this fish fresh out of Tim Burton's wet dream is actually pretty cool looking. <laughs> and I'm just gonna say it. I think they're cute, and I'm perfectly fine with standing on that hill alone. However, I don't think you'll find a single soul on this next shark's hill. Feast your eyes on the goblin shark, a demon. All right, man. They just show none of this in the Little Mermaid. This is amazing. Yeah, we Sebastian missed out. Sebastian was lying, bro. Yeah, makes sense though. Talking about stay under the water. Somebody, somebody's gonna tell the story. Yeah. yeah, the 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 real the Little Mermaid story, the real one. <laughs> why she really wanted to leave. A twenty four in Blumhouse presents. Shutter got, Productions. Got these 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 underwater devils out here, bro. I'm good. The goblin shark. Look at this. Call it the deep sea. Dog looking fish with a mouth that snaps like nobody's business. They're rarely seen, but are known to live in oceans all around the world at depths of up to 4,200 feet below the surface of the ocean and are estimated to get to 18 feet long, which is really big for a deep sea shark. You might've seen videos online of their jaws just fully ejecting Whoa. from their brain case in a process called slingshot feeding. It's kind of what they're known for. Their upper and lower jaws plunge forward away from the skull, engulfing their prey. I know it probably seems ridiculous and almost alien, but it's actually not uncommon. Most fishes have jaws that aren't entirely attached. One might argue that the goblin shark is the most extreme example of this look until you see a video of the slingjaw rats who use suction feeding. To snap <laughs> their breath. They look like they have a stuck in their mouth. Goblin sharks. Ooh. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Yo, that fool got a big old jaw. That's crazy. That's, that's an instant KO right there. Man have a particularly long snap and it's not for nothing they have sensory structures pores all over it that help okay. them locate their prey like squid fish and crustaceans and i am personally grateful i am not a squid fish or crustacean yeah goblin's the right word for the oh, only shark in the world with a receding gum line but you gotta admit yeeting your own jaw to catch calories is pretty metal and you're gonna find that a lot of the creatures rolling in a deep have evolved some of the most creative ways of bagging groceries. Yo, he bit Probably his hand. the most popular is the fish that nearly turned Nemo into an orphan. The anglerfish has two defining personality oh, traits. And one crazy. of them is that fishing lure hanging right in front of those life-canceling jaws. That light actually comes from bioluminescent bacteria shacking up inside a modified fin. So when a bite-sized light work swims up to the light thing and it just cops some easy protein, the angler ensures that some fish out there never sees its father again. The other thing anglerfish got clout for is Whoa. their mating habits. I'm not gonna get into it, just know that if you're- That thing looks scary, bro. That's terrifying. That's something out of a Jim Henson, a creature design thing. 
Bro, yeah. look at them teeth, man. Yeah, right? If marriage looks anything like theirs, you're gonna need both a divorce and a restraining order. And you know what? <laughs> Intensive therapy on top of that, expert freaking diciously. Nemo's paralysis demon oh. isn't the only deep sea creature to weaponize light. This distinguished gentleman is known as a stoplight loose jaw, and his defining trait is that it uses a red light to hunt. Which turns mm. out to be a massive Chico, since the longer the wavelength of a color, the less energy that wavelength has, and the faster it gets absorbed by water. And since the color red has the longest wavelength out of all of them, it's the first one to get absorbed. This is why red light can't reach the deep sea, and the animals living in the abyss that are red actually appear black, which makes it easier for them to hide from predatory smoke. But with mm. a stoplight using red as a searchlight, it's pretty much cracked at this version of hide and seek. Not to mention, since most of the life down there can't even see red, it's able to catch bodies while also not giving up its location to predators or the prey it packs up. This fish really evolved a whole wall hack and a real life invisibility cloak. Tell me that ain't crazy. And Bro, we literally got. He just unraveled That's in like creepy. 10 minutes five different species that I had no clue existed. Yeah. Because that's we only discover five percent of what's down there. Why are they not telling us this stuff in school, man? We're not ready for it. Yes, we are. Like, yo, like we're not ready, but we're ready, man. And make it make sense. <laughs> I would have never took a, a sea cruise. Yeah. And that freakish overbite ensures that once prey is found, it's lost forever. But why hunt prey when you could just sit and wait for it to come to you? That's the entire playbook for the deep sea lizard fish. Just look at that smile. You know he's on nefarious timing. And at over two feet long, they earned the title of being one of the premier apex predators of the deep sea. As a habitual camper, they lie waiting for life. Uh, them lips, though. Uh, them lips are disgusting. Man. Them <sighs> by before they lunge and use hypodermic needles for teeth to cancel it. And with apex standing for anyone providing smoke gets yeah, extinguished, herpes. lizard fish don't hesitate to turn their own kind into coffin fodder. And with the whole point of those teeth being to hold Ooh. struggling, panicking prey in place, they make sure they don't live long enough to learn from their mistake. But as much of a therapy build as Gecko Guppy's mugshot might be, it might not even be the worst headshot in the ocean. Not as long as this is still a factor. Oh. I don't know anyone who would waste the oxygen trying to defend this. I would. Many say this is a face <laughs> only a mother could love. Well then maybe he is my son. This is the deep sea telescope fish. One of the most stunning creatures of the deep tropical oceans. They're found at depths of about 1600 to 6600 feet below the surface of the ocean. I can't say that normally. Surface of the ocean. And like you'll see if you look up photos of them online, they are often photographed at unfortunate angles that don't do them any justice. <laughs> they orient themselves upwards, hanging out vertically in the water column, as they use their specially adapted eyes to hunt for the silhouettes of their prey. There are two species of telescope fish, Gigantera indica and Gigantera chuni. Don't be fooled by their genus name, which makes them sound like they're gigantic. That is not the case at all. Indica only gets to about eight inches long and chuni a measly six. They are just little guys. Gigantera actually translates to big tail, specifically. They are about half tail. But if they happen to latch onto a snack that's a bit bigger than their own size, that's no problem at all. They underwent a series of skeletal reductions that allow for more room to just fold it in half. That's right. They are expert folders. In 1925, scientists found a five and a half inch long viper fish inside the stomach of a three inch long telescope fish. They described mm. it as neatly folded, an incredible quality possessed by the lovely telescope fish. Yeah, I'm sure if we gave it bliss. Wow. Okay. That was well uh, documented. Um, I want to see more on those. This is crazy, bro. Yeah, this is very, very interesting. Like the whole the whole idea of it, you know, what I mean, knowing that this stuff exists, and she said 1925, so there's been records and 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 documents of these fish and everything like that, and I'm just and stunned that, that no here. one's really like yeah. taught people these things. It's crazy, man. It's missing text. Text and a hairline restoration surgery, he'd be cute, but that's just me. That being said, there's a lot of pretty dope things just chilling in the deep. Take the yeah. barrel-eyed fish, the fish with a transparent head that means it can spot ops or prey directly above it, thanks to those two green gummy looking orbs Whoa. that are actually its eyes. Or the ultra-rare giant phantom jellyfish. A Darth Vader helmet? That makes this ET understudy the length of a whale shark. And when I say rare, I mean this jelly's only been seen like a hundred times in the history of mankind. So the fact that you're watching this right now is kind of wild. Then you have the deep sea Dumbo octopus that copes with stress Whoa. by turning itself into a ball to discourage predators from eating it. And if Ooh. this right here looks familiar, yeah, right to his thighs. <laughs> the vampire squid does the inverse as they'll turn themselves inside out and into their own personal panic room whenever they're pressed by a possible oh. predator. That's and crazy. how about a sea pig for you? Take everything I said so about sea cucumbers and forget it for a second because 
Honestly, they're just really cute in a way I can't fully explain. But it's not hard to see what makes this squid instant serotonin. Rosia Back pacifica man. or the stubby squid is actually more like a cuttlefish. It's also a cuddly fish. And it's nature's apology letter for the sheer trauma it saturated the ocean with. It's actually real, and those arts and crafts looking eyes help it catch prey on a nocturnal schedule. It's also important as an environmental indicator, since scientists will often study their responses to changes in water pH and use that to determine how polluted the water is around them. Oh. Yep. <laughs> that, <laughs> they fishing too. I'm telling you, so that's that's the key. So that that one single eye, they hunting, they working. Dang, they, they on, they're looking for something too because he said something about the the, the radar, uh, the sonar. They could see up to like miles and stuff like that, and that their like senses are on like heightened. So everything's working at the same time, like which is pretty crazy. But everybody does it differently. But you see that one eye, you know something's up. I don't, this is this is freaky. Which yeah. you would think would earn this anime octopus the respect of the scientific community. Well, you'd be wrong. There's a video where some scientists found one, and let me just say, not even Hiroshima got roasted that hard. <laughs> but that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you go ahead and drink water, hug your moms, go subscribe to Lindsay's channel, link will be in the description. <laughs> Shout out to Lindsay for being in this video, yeah. and I'm gonna see y'all in the next one. Tight. It was so fake. <laughs> so some, some other aerobic team Tight. just came before and just left it here. It's like some little kid dropped their toy. <laughs> <laughs> it do look like that though. Yeah. Oh I thought of Pac-Man when I was looking at it. <laughs> Eat the ghost. <laughs> it reminded me that 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 video that movie with uh, Rihanna. Oh, okay. Alien. Battleship. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. She did like an animation. Oh, okay. okay. I used to watch. I, I can't think of what it is. Well, uh, right. shout out to it. Casual Geographic, man. What a great episode. That's some special content right there, you know. Ah, oh, man. I'm sorry, man. The you horrors know. of the deep sea and uh, the nature and uh, the abyss and the discovery of it and like what's down there, what's it extinct, what's not, you know, still questions. So it's still information down there. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, G. Uh, Shout out to the brave cameraman that they, do it. David Zasloff needs to reach out to him and uh, <laughs> boost up Discovery Channel again because Shark Week kind of getting played out. We need to start getting back. Yeah, to yeah and, and get horror directors to come in. Get yeah, Del Toro, yeah, James and, Wan, and, and, and you know James and, Cameron loves the water. And, and do and do an epic, a epic uh, underwater documentary road like the Sea Trilogy, the, yeah, the Deep the, Sea yeah, Trilogy. Yeah, because because different this, types of fish, this octopus, is, squid, bro. This is, this is madness. Yeah, like this is stuff that we just ain't used to seeing, man. That was that was some crazy things, man. Just looking down in the water, man. And it's like. If and he just gave us a taste of that, it was like twenty minute video. Oh yeah, yeah. And all the rumors that you hear about things under there that that bump at the night that we we ain't supposed to encounter and and, and people say you crazy if you believe this and all stuff like that. But it's like that's a beautiful thing I because always, somebody's gonna go down there and be like, oh yeah, you know what I am crazy and you know what I'm gonna show you. Yeah, and, and it, yeah. it comes to the point where it's like, who made this up? Right. You know what I mean? Like they say the cracking is fake. The squid being that large to bring down a whole ship. But I don't that's know about because that. you guys didn't. Put the work in to go and try to see. Well, I don't think nobody needs to try to see it. We just need to just take it for what it is. Yeah. Because I ain't going to put two and two to, you know what I mean? You Because you got people that have these actual research endorsed documents. And then, you know, you got cameramen that explore and discover. And then, you know, whatever they find, they fossilize and things like that. So you got the evidence that's there and you got the documents that are there. It's just that the adventure and like the hunt of going through like where these things would naturally be. Like, that, you know, who's no one's to say that you're going to run into it, but naturally like that's the exciting part of what we're asking for as far as the documentary we want to see the journey of where this actually is or where it could potentially be that's look, the exciting part look give me superman's powers and yeah. let me go underwater <laughs> game like, what is he doing you can't right? you can't penetrate the skin bro stop, stop yeah stop go swim, so, swim off and see the stuff firsthand like, that's I the idea and then the filmmaker and uh creatures you know that are like kind of behind it you know bringing that vision to it so you they're gonna gloss it up you know what i'm saying that documentary but still has that movie eye yeah yeah kind of feel to it nah I, i'm i'm with it i just it's just crazy man a shark being pregnant for three years yeah. mind-boggling you know what i mean and, and and he went deep underwater like there's there's stuff that's above that you know what three I mean? years pregnant like that's a the wound the battle wounds that whale had you know what i mean like all the scars from, yeah, yeah all over the yeah. fighting squids bro like yeah you talking about he eight foot up. squid coming in a thousand deep? Yeah. Oh hell no, nah, man! Like, and that uh, that shallow octopus squid that kind of shielded himself, and then like he turned himself he turned to a ball, ball like, to protect yo. himself like a force field, like 
That was crazy. Like, so he did like an inside out. And you know, you know, it's crazy. Man. People be eating this stuff. Yeah. yeah. I can't do it. I can't do it. I I will not do it. I will not do it. Now, Red Snapper, you got me. They got me with those. Uh, I'll eat some Red Snapper. Those undersea tarantulas kind of creeped me out, though. That was, they were massive. Yeah. I, I, got, I got arachnophobia real bad. Yeah. That's some real stuff. And I love that movie. So <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, it yo, did its <laughs> job. It what we saw, it did its job. Like it got me. I was like, it, it curled and you know what's up. Funny, and to this day, yeah. I always shake my shoes off. Yeah, because that old man put his foot in that slipper. Bro, <laughs> basements creep me out, man. John Goodman, man. Yeah. Oh man, but y'all, this was fun, man. But guess what? It's not about us. It's about y'all. Post your comments down below. Let us know what y'all thought about this video. Are you guys afraid of the sea? Under the sea? Are you are you buying that BS that Sebastian was saying? <laughs> it ain't it ain't good the under truth there. Truth is out there. You know what I mean? Scully. <laughs> They should do an X Files about the sea. I'll be down for it. Like just like a cool little, uh, like a five part episode about. I'll be down for about it. About some mer didn't they? Didn't they do one about mermaids? I think they did. They X Files hit everything, bro. Well, I don't they, know what they, they gonna, I don't know what they're gonna do now. I heard they, they they're coming back out, but that, that's gonna. Well, be I know a third movie's still happening though, so we'll see. Because the last two were good. All right. Yeah. But uh, like I said, it's not about us. It's about y'all. Post your comments down below. Let us know what y'all thought. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and press the subscribe button. Thumbs this video up. Don't forget to share Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. I'm yeah. J3. From the Showgun. Woo! Ninja Assassin. Road to 100,000 subscribers, guys. Yes.